Hey guys, so now that you know how to calculate torque in a bunch of different situations, we're going to look into what happens as a result of a torque, which is that you get an acceleration. So let's check it out. All right, so we're going to look into torque with acceleration, not just calculate torque, but also maybe calculate the acceleration that results from it. And a combination of these two items, when you have an acceleration as a result of a torque, um, that situation is called, this topic in physics is called rotational dynamics. Okay, um, statics typically refers to situations where um, there is no velocity, right? So you're at rest, and dynamics means that there's going to be uh, velocity or acceleration. Um, so you already know this, that when a force causes rotation, it produces a torque, or even when a force tries to cause rotation, it produces a torque. Um, you can think of torque as the rotational equivalent of force, you know this as well. Now what I want to do is, since they're equivalent of each other, I want to do a compare and contrast between forces and torque. So force, remember, causes linear acceleration. Linear acceleration, A. And the relationship between force and acceleration, A, um, is described by, uh, by this equation, by the sum of all forces equals MA, which we call Newton's second law. This is Newton's second law, right? Now, torque is very similar. Instead of causing linear acceleration, A, torque causes angular or rotational acceleration, same thing, alpha, right? And the relationship between um, torque and what it causes, which is alpha, is very similar to the, ro the relationship between F and A. In fact, it's the same equation, except we're just going to switch the variables to their angular equivalents. So I just mentioned how the angular or rotation equivalent of force is torque. So we're going to do instead of sum of all forces, we're going to do sum of all torques. Remember, the rotation equivalent of mass, right? In rotation, we don't use mass. What matters is your moments of inertia. So I'm going to put an I here. And instead of A in rotation, we're going to have alpha. Okay? So th these two equations are basically the same thing. Just one is with linear variables. The other one is rotational variables. In fact, this is also Newton's second law. This is the rotational equivalent or the rotational version of Newton's second law. So you may see your, your professor or your textbook call this Newton's second law. And the idea is that both of these guys are Newton's second law. All right. Um, so the quantity of inertia quantity of inertia is how much resistance you have to acceleration, to linear acceleration, is given by the letter M, by mass. So mass is the amount of resistance to change, the amount of inertia you have, and the amount of resistance to alpha is not M, but it is I, right? And the last point is that when you have force and acceleration, you have this branch of physics called linear dynamics which in the past we may have called it just dynamics because there's only one type. Um, but if you have torque in alpha instead, you have what's called rotational dynamics. That's just the name. It doesn't really matter. But in case you hear these words, you know what's up. All right? So that's the difference. Um, so basically, you might remember doing a bunch of F equals MA. Now you're going to do a bunch of torque equals I alpha. And in fact, in some cases, you're going to do two of them combined. So let's do an example here. See how this stuff works. All right, so here it says I have a solid disk. Solid disks, remember, um, this is a the shape of the disk, so I can stop and write that the moment of inertia is half mR squared. Um, solid disk of mass 100 and radius uh, 2, so I already get those numbers. M equals 100, R equals 2. is free to rotate, so it can spin around this, um, a fixed axis. So it can rotate around the axis, but the axis doesn't move. The disc is fixed in place and it can only spin in place. The axis is perpendicular to the disc. Um, that means that if you have the face of the disc, the axis points this way, which just means the disc is going to spin around itself. Um, and it's frictionless. Okay? You push tangentially on the disc. If you push tangentially on the disc, it looks like this, right? Like sort of at the edge of the disc um, with a constant force of 50. So let me write this here. F equals 50 Newtons. Um, we want to derive an expression 
for the angular acceleration that this experiences. So part A, we want to find alpha, that's angular acceleration. And for part, we want to derive an expression. And for part B, we want to then calculate that. So find an expression and then calculate it just means plug in all the numbers. Okay? So how do we do this? Well, I'm giving you a force and I'm asking you for an alpha. Back in the day, um, if I gave you a force and asked you for A, you would use F equals MA. But here I'm giving you a force but asking for an alpha. So instead, you're going to use sum of all torques equals I alpha, and that's because you're looking for alpha, okay? Now, the only force that causes this uh, a torque, that produces a torque on this disc, is this force here. So the only torque we have is going to be the torque of F. Now that torque, that force is producing a torque that's trying to spin this thing this way, which is a clockwise torque, so it's negative. So I'm gonna put a little negative in front, okay? The moment of inertia is half mR squared. I'm gonna go, go ahead and write this here, and I'm gonna leave alpha alone because that's what we're looking for. So now I have to expand torque of F, which is why it's important to know how to calculate a bunch of different torques. So the torque of any force F is FR sine of theta, where remember R is the distance from the axis and theta is the angle between F and R. Here, my R, my R vector looks like this. And the length of the R vector is the entire radius of the wheel. And that's because you're pushing all the way at the edge of the, the wheel. All right. So this is going to be the force you're applying little r is the radius and then sine of theta the angle between the force theta is the angle between the force and the r vector the angle between those two is this right here which is 90 so i get sine of 90 that's what you get on the left side let's rewrite the right side again here and you get this this becomes sine of 90 becomes one this r cancels with one of the two r's on the other side and we're ready to go. I'm gonna move, I'm solving for alpha. I'm gonna move everything to the other side so alpha's by itself. So I'm gonna get negative, um, negative two F divided by MR. That's going to be our alpha, okay? Um, I'm getting, notice I'm getting a negative acceleration, which makes sense, it's going this way. So the acceleration should be negative. So this is part A. For part B, all we're doing is plug it in the numbers. So that's easy, negative two F um, the force is 50, the mass is 100, and the radius is 2. So this is going to be negative 0 0.5 radians per second squared. Cool. So that's it. That's it for this one. Uh, hopefully it made sense. Let me know if you have any questions. Let's keep going.